We love horror movies from the 70s and 80s And we watch them for two days straight And then we go write a book Now we're looking back at every title One at a time in this podcast that we put out monthly Once we've had an episode for every movie It's time to meet up for another shock marathon Oh yeah, the red light is red, which means we're recording another exciting edition of the Shock Marathons podcast. I'm Matt Farley here with Tom Scalzo. Hello. Ava Scalzo. Hi. Charlie Roxburgh. Greetings. And we're here to discuss The Prey from 1984. Any uh, alternate titles, folks? I didn't get any alternate titles, but I got... I have the Blu-ray, which comes with a booklet, which explains the production history, which is much more complicated than you would think. For <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So I think the actual release date was 1984, but it was filmed in earlier, 1979. 79? Yeah. Wow. That's a <laughs> journey. Good for them. <laughs> wow. Yeah. And there's two versions of the film, basically. Yes. The U.S. theatrical and the international. Well, we saw the boring version. <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> well, back in the day when we watched the VHS, yes, I think we saw the standard one that was in America. Yes. But watching the new one, yeah, I mean, even just transfer-wise, we're gonna, we could talk about it. But yes, this is a, this is glorious. All yeah. right. Who know? I mean, I watched a version on YouTube. Hopefully, that's the same one you guys. That's on it's, the Blu-ray. So. I can get into it more as we go along, but the international one includes, uh, it's 97 minutes, and it includes footage that's completely not in the one that we saw for Shock July. So it's, okay. it's you would know if you had watched that version. Okay, right. I watched the one hour and 19 minute version right here. Yeah. yeah. So now, it, yeah, what did you, Tom and Ava, which one did you watch for this? We watched the U.S. release, and then Tom did some extra homework and watched the international. <laughs> what a guy. <laughs> All right. Well, I can't wait to hear more about that. But let's get through. <laughs> let's get through this first. It starts off. Uh, starts right off with a fire at um, the North Point, Keen Wild, back in 1948. We yep. hear we hear people screaming, and then that goes away. Charlie, I love that screen because every word makes no sense to me. <laughs> <laughs> it, it just says the North Point, Keen Wild. And I was sort of like, I don't know where either of those things are. <laughs> yes, I know. But it, but it made me chuckle. And it, it's fun. So that was fun watching the the, the burning, and then um, opening. Then it's opening credits time. Um, long opening credits with um, a shot of the moon. Very Friday the Thirteenth um, music right there. Yep. Yep. It's a bold choice too. Like usually, you know, in those credits, you have kids driving down the highway or like yes. in uh mutilator right it's it, there's a lot going on this is just a static moon for the entire credits it's it's bold i felt the same way and like just why why i <laughs> guess they because if they're only an hour 19 minutes they're like we got to do we got to fill it up right Jake charlie literally worked very hard to pad this <laughs> film because <laughs> the actual plot in this movie is not a lot. You're right. I mean, <laughs> yeah. just the animals alone, you know? I mean, we're going to yeah. get to it. But yeah, Charlie. Yeah, the, the, the moon kind of sets the tone for the nature, you know? And it, it sort of shows that this movie has like a foot in 60s, 70s filmmaking a little more than 80s, and especially like late 80s, you know, yeah. where well, they that, were more yeah. more afraid of the pace being considered slow and, and, and you know, amp ramping stuff up. Here, they kind of really weren't afraid to let it breathe. No, they were not afraid <laughs> to let it breathe. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now it's 1980 at the same place. What's it called again? The North Point, Keen Wild. Keen <laughs> Wild. <laughs> a man and a woman are enjoying a meal at a campsite. Good chow, the man says. And um, yeah. <laughs> POV, <laughs> POV shot Wonderful. of them being stalked. <laughs> Shots of back to the shots of the happy campers nodding happily to one another. So, That's a theme of this movie too, right? People, no one actually says anything 
That was I. I had said to Tom, I was like, I would actually really love to see the screenplay because I feel like instead of actual dialogue, it was just a stage direction, like small talk around campfire. Like oh. literally, I think they didn't actually have scenes written. They just literally, like, it was just talk amongst yourselves. That's and what it is. Yes. That's what, the, that's what that's what the researcher says on the commentary. Yeah. What you just said. So when it says the scene, it says the couples make various small talk. So <laughs> then the actors had to make it up. And I, I wonder if also in some cases they didn't want to run the recording in the woods. So they were like, we'll just dub in some random. Sometimes I felt like they were ADRing stuff and they're just saying hub, 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 hub. Yeah. You know, like stuff like that. Filler. <laughs> Same story over and over again. <laughs> okay, so now we're at the point of view of the stalker. He sees the campfire, and uh, that just brings him right back. Right back yeah. to 1948. <laughs> yeah. they're, tip they're dipping their toes in that, but it doesn't, as, as we'll see, it's not ultimately the end-all, be-all of what like makes him mad. It's, right. it's something. He doesn't like it. Yeah, I mean, fire right? just naturally, yeah. I mean... Everyone, his whole family was burned. It appears, you know, in '48. So I guess fire would naturally, um, you know, give him a little, uh, yeah, it yeah. cause him to give take pause or whatever the phrase is. Anyway, um, the woman tells the man that she's walking to the lake. If she's not back in ten minutes, he should come looking for her. Ha ha ha. Um, I don't know. I wouldn't want to go to the lake by myself at night like that. I said to Tom, I was like. There is no way I could ever do that. If we were camping, no way. Yeah, I don't, no think, way. Yeah. I don't think you would ever be camping. Well, first of all, I wouldn't but... be camping. That is also true. But say I was, yeah. I would not be being like, oh, yeah, I'm just going to go, like, stroll through these woods. <laughs> Got to clean the dishes before the bears come. You well, know? You, you, you put them in a bag or something and you keep them in a <laughs> Or go together. Just go together, you know? It's a theme yeah, of the movie. Busy. <laughs> yeah. Let me, let me light up this pipe while you go do all that work. <laughs> exactly. So we sit with him for quite a while. He smokes the pipe, uh, walks about the campsite, sharpens his axe. The woman hears a rustling in the trees, but then continues with her journey. The man chops some wood. Woman continues walking. Then she hears him scream, Frank, she calls. Upon arriving, she sees that uh, his head has been... Uh, so this is like the signature move of the bad guy. He kind of just twists your head around, right? That's what he does, Tom? Yeah. Yeah, he comes usually up from behind. That's most of it. And just kind of squeezes you. Either twist your head off or just kind of pinches it off like a crab or something. <laughs> <laughs> I thought he did it with the axe. He didn't do it with the axe. Oh, well, I, we don't know. We didn't actually see it. So I know, but I thought that what we saw was just the head it could have been spurting the blood. It was like neck spurting yeah, blood. Oh, yeah. You're pro yeah, it could go either way. It could, that could have been the axe. He goes for the head one way or the other. That's his, his move. Yeah, that, that, yeah. The, 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 there was like the just it, – I thought it was the – I was like because he sharpens the axe, so I just assumed that he – That could be, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So moments – I will say here that real quick, just in general – it's easy to see, and it looks pretty good here on the, this new yeah. transfer. For I've seen many a movie in the woods at night where you can't see Jack, and this was this was good. It's a yeah. revelation yeah. compared to what yeah. we watched on VHS. It's beautiful. The whole thing is beautiful. The whole thing was like that was one thing that Tom was like, and I consistently talked about, especially once you go through all the like nature cinematography that this film indulges in. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, it's very beautiful. I yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah, so does it belong here? <laughs> really nice. Moments like later. Oh, what, Tom? Uh, the, the nature stuff nature. is symbolic. <laughs> oh, we're about to get to it. Moments later, the, the <laughs> wife su suffers the same fate as, uh, as Frank, and uh, we're done with them. And then we get a close-up of a bee, a spider, a millipede, a toad, a raccoon, a hawk, and a moth flying into a spider web. And I mean, and it, they're they're lingering on each one of these things, right, Charlie? Yeah. And uh, you know, again, nice photography. Uh, there's a tradition in B movies of this kind of filler. Usually it's stock footage that they use. 
because they could buy it cheap and they don't have to, you know, they want to film it themselves. Here, it looks like it matches kind of the regular footage. So I guess they filmed it. Part of me is like, do they just want to fill time, of course? And part of me is like, are they establishing a lot of these animals are eating when we see them or attacking? So, you know, there's that. Are they trying to show other things are prey? And like, this is the chain of events in the wild. It's a bold yeah. move, Tom. <laughs> Yeah, I'd buy it though. It works. It's peaceful. It's, it gets you in the mindset of you know you're surrounded by hunters and prey. Yeah, you're not gonna find a bigger champion of the prey anywhere than Tom Scalzo, though, right, Ava? <laughs> Listen, the other day there was like this flying ant in our bedroom at like I don't know, it's like two o'clock in the morning, and I literally could not sleep. And I was like, why am I being attacked and surrounded by bugs? Like, yeah, I had to watch this movie, and I'm, like, <laughs> looking at all these close-ups and the scritch, scritch, scritch of the bugs walking, and it was so gross. Yeah. Like, and this is why I will never go camping. <laughs> yeah, there's no point. There's no point. All right, now we're with a van load of fun-loving young people who are singing and driving um, some um, some body um, songs, right, Charlie? Those lyrics get a little uh, racy. Yes, and it's some kind of sing-song thing that they seem a little too old to be doing, but uh, it sets a nice early tone, which we like, of having characters who are friendly and not always fighting all the time. And also, uh, I think we could, if we were doing a book right now, I could easily do an essay about sing, singing in the van on the way to camp oh, or yeah. listening to music on the you know, You got Just Before Dawn, you've got... Uh, this, I don't know if this happened in Final Terror, but there's a lot of happy people on their way to camping, rocking out, or say, cheerleader camp, I think, yep. yeah. uh -huh. doing that kind of thing. So it, it falls in that tradition. In fact, it was before many of them when, it, when they filmed it. But uh, it's fun. I, I'm liking this uh, vibe of, of early fun, you know, in the movie. So they arrive at the place where they need to get the permits to do some camping. One of the girls uses the, the Porta John with the label Hardy's Canned Relief. Call 658-7944. If they included the uh, area code, I would have called. But um, <laughs> where was it filmed, Tom? Do you know? California. Okay. Well, that's too many potential area codes over there. A forest... It's in Idlewild, Idlewild, California, if oh. you want this place. <laughs> I, might, I might do some research after we record this. <laughs> now we get to meet... A hunk of a um, of a um, forest ranger, according to one of the girls, and she's talking about M Mark. Okay, Mark O'Brien is that his name? Yep. Okay, good old Mark O'Brien. He uh, he says hello to the ladies. Gail is the blonde one, Bobby with the short hair, and Nancy the brunette. And um, there's some major vibes going on there, Charlie, huh? Major vibes, good. Uh, he's a good '70s kind of uh, back to nature man, sort of as if uh, Chris Christopherson maybe were a ranger. In much, uh -huh. um, yeah, a, a young but one. But he's yeah. he's also a nice guy. I think it's they're showing and kind of cool because he doesn't, he's not impolite or forward with the girls. It's just like, hey, you're cool. Have fun. You know, you don't get weird creeper vibes from him. Uh, it seems like he likes his job. So that that's another plus for this movie, that we're going to see somebody who's kind of cool. And it's it's fun to watch. And he looks believable as a ranger. Yeah. 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 Tom, currently, uh, this is an audio podcast, but was the the ranger who inspired you to grow the grow out the beard? <laughs> yeah, I think it was in the back of my head somewhere, yes. I want to be more like Mark. That and the banjo. Oh, my god! And you're a banjo that's player. <laughs> it's, it's, I've been working on this since Shock July. <laughs> oh, you're slowly becoming I, I, Ranger I Mark. Out. There's a part in Metal Detector Maniac where I, I tempt in some banjo music. Oh. You guys will see it. You guys will see it tomorrow, I think. So maybe, maybe Tom, your, your beard will give you power. I, think I could do that. That would be... <laughs> So the the, yeah. the the group is going to North Point. He tells them it's a good place to go if you want to be alone, but watch out for bears. And so we cut to a shot of a bear, then a woodpecker, and then a snake. <laughs> I'm so like, look, I'm sorry. I'd rather the movie be six minutes shorter and and we not see these things. Ava, 
I need your I, support. Yeah, you know, it just, <laughs> it, it really just slowed a lot of the pacing down because you'd just be sitting there and was like, oh, okay. <laughs> um, but then at least this next scene that, that it leads into is actually kind of interesting because it's, it's their long hike up to the, the campground. Um, yeah, I don't like. I mean, them hiking is a little boring too. But at least it's not just a random animal, you know. Like, I'll yeah. take it. I'll take boring hiking shots. Bring it on. It, I mean, but like when you consider the movie as a whole, this is probably one of the more dynamic moments in this movie. Is their hike up to yeah the the campsite? Yeah, I mean, very yeah. little happens. Uh, campers <laughs> yeah. go camping and then uh, all die. I'm I think, okay. I, think I like Farley... that. I like that though. Yeah, Charlie. You prefer your animals to be clumsy too. Oh yes, yeah. He does. <laughs> it's funny that like, you know uh, it does it it does have more in common, like Charlie said, with those early '70s uh, uh, things. It, you know, it's an interesting mix. I wouldn't have I wouldn't have guessed 1979, but now that you say it, it makes a little more sense. If uh, they don't like like those movies, like uh, like Slash Dreams, right? It, it it's it has more of a social message that it's trying to do. I think this movie doesn't really have that. It has the vibe of that, but it yes. doesn't really have that. So without the social messaging part or like the intense late mid to late eighties pacing, it's, it's just like mellow woods. It's a sweet <laughs> yeah. spot. Very strange. I mean, it reminded me a lot of, was it Deathstock the one that it reminded me of? You which mentioned, which you is mentioned the one? Deathstock. Which is the one that they're going down the the river? Yeah, yeah the, the two couples. Stock. Yeah, that's the death stock. I mean, it does like it was like there was some sense of I think, and I think partly it's this hiking thing that that makes me think of that, where it's like they are yeah. going, they're trekking through like two point to a different point in the woods, so they're 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 going somewhere. Yeah. Um, and then they have these weird social. But but at least Deathstock has intensity, right? Because you have oh, the yeah. bad guys, you know. Like there's there's like a story there. But this, like the fact of the matter is, it's so clear that this script had no actual dialogue. Like there's so there's so very few scenes that are clearly scripted. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. a little it's a little bizarre for like Tom was just saying, but for for the amount of budget, it looks like they had. It's like okay, we've got beautiful camera. We're gonna do freaking rock climbing. We're hauling everybody up from LA to this mountain and and filming for all these days. Take an extra, stay up late the night before filming. Get like pencils and stuff in. But yeah. I still love it. Don't get me wrong. But it is very light in that department, exceptionally yeah. so. Unless they were in a big hurry, I don't know why they would be so. So well, yeah, according to the details we read, it they had the planned out two weeks of filming. Like they had everybody up there. It wasn't like they were just doing it on the weekends whenever they had time. Like it was all very well planned out. Like yeah. they definitely could have taken a couple of days to write. But it's interesting too. Even in the even in the the liner notes of the DVD actually talks a little bit about this. But they there were some things that they they had scripted that they or scenes that they that they had that they wanted to set up that they never actually shot. Um, so not necessarily dialogue or anything scripted, but they had these like key scenes that they wanted to do and they, they didn't even get to all of them, which is like fascinating because you kind of also like, did they just focus so much on this nature photography piece? Like, I really don't know. Yeah. <clears throat> I'm waiting for the salamander to walk, uh, walk across. This. <laughs> <laughs> There's no time to shoot this uh, dialogue. <laughs> Quiet. <laughs> All right, uh, now the gang's hiking and hiking. Um, man, am I ready for tonight, one of the guys says. And then um, one of the other guys gives some graphic advice about how to proceed with, with the, the, the ladies tonight. Then we get a quick shot of one of the girls saying it's going to be so romantic, which I guess is just like they're like, oh, isn't it funny how uh, men and women are different? That's what they were trying to um, sell us there. Um, but uh, we're yeah. like... All, that's the only line we get from the girls. It's going to be so romantic. Like we don't hear, like we've been saying, we don't hear any more of the conversation. That's it. Just that little, in a, in a, in a, in a, in a scene, like we see the girls hiking, we hear that line and that's the end of the, the scene. <laughs> like it's so jarring the way like things 
mo- are cut so quickly. Yeah. All right. Well, it cuts so quickly when there's people on the screen, and then so slowly <laughs> when it's a bug. <laughs> Speaking of which, we get a shot of a salamander immediately after that. Um, now, Gail, compl- Gail is the blonde. Um, she, t- uh, some of the guys, are, you know, their eyes kind of uh, turn towards Gail, even if Gail isn't their girlfriend. Um, and uh, you know, she's got a lot of personality. Uh, she's got a blister on her blister. She tells them. Uh, one of the guys reminds her that he told her to break in her boots, and she's not impressed with that. Reminiscent boot talk makes me think of. Um, there's only one thing I told you to bring: an extra pair of boots. Uh, <laughs> what was that? Yeah. One? That's the the one with the, the four older with Hal or Holbrook. Older? Hal Holbrook out in the woods. Rituals. 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 You know. Yeah. yeah. Anyway. Yeah. As they leave, she says she'll catch up because she's got to brush her hair. A- another moment, much like um, the opening scene where she, the woman goes to wash the the plates by the lake, they just leave Gail deep in this these thick woods. I'll catch up. What? Yeah. And you gotta wonder, like, as as it progresses, like, she must have been there brushing her hair for like an hour, <laughs> like because. The yeah. guy goes catches fish, like all this stuff happens. <laughs> and she, she does, then she comes to the campsite, like what is she doing? Well, the the fishing thing is interesting because that was um, sorry we're jumping ahead a little bit. Though. Yeah, but that's they 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 talk a little bit about that's one of those scenes that they don't think they set up because like even though there is the lake there, there's clearly a lake in the place. They didn't actually use it as a setting, and it was like mm. <clears throat> interesting, like wh- whether or not they. You know, that was one of the things in the DVD liner notes that they talked about, like why they elected not to use those. Yeah. Either they ran out of time or who knows. Mm-hmm. Or they are... couldn't get good shots by the lake, maybe the, the audio or something. Those are some deep woods, though, don't you think, Charlie? It feels like they, oh, they paid yeah. their dues. It does feel like that. I, and I think I've heard once or twice on like people commenting about this movie that, yeah, it was a bit of a pain to get in there, you know, get in that woods far enough to film that stuff. And in terms of the story, Deep Woods for Gail, who one, is not an experienced camper, and two, doesn't know where she's going. Yeah. <laughs> That's the other thing. To brush her hair. Yeah. Makes that no sense. That was the sense. thing that I was like, how how is she going to catch up? She just how does she even know where they're going? Yeah, there's no like trail. it's not like they were marking the trail for her. Yeah, yeah, and her feet are hurt. Yeah, yeah, really, really strange and unnecessary. Like to the it, it makes no sense and it doesn't lead. It's not like she ends up getting killed because she's behind them. She does catch up, which is less believable, you know. But she has a scare. It's a fake scare. Yeah, a little fake scare. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. A little POV shots. Over well, there. you have some POV, and I, oh, I always, yeah, I kind of yeah. assumed that it was like the, 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 that's where he notices them. Like that's where he first notices them. Could be. Yeah. Um, yeah. I thought that you know, like one of the things I, I was telling Tom, you know, one of the things that that struck me. Bill, I can talk about that later. I'll talk about that. Yeah, later. don't jump ahead. No, I'm jumping ahead. All Sorry. right. So she, like we said, she had the little scare there, um, and there's some birds. Uh, now the the group makes it to the campsite. Like we said, Gail finally arrives, seemingly much later, and um, they find a pipe. Let's listen to some dialogue here, folks. Uh, the discovery of the pipe. Somebody lost their pipe. You bastard. Why didn't somebody wait for me? I could have been raped or killed out there. By what, Gailey? A horny chipmunk? There's nothing out there that could hurt you. It's Greg here you gotta watch out for. I hear it comes down to his knees. A lot you know. There was something out there, and it followed me here. Hey, Gail, did you get lost? Screw you. There was something out there. There really was. Sure, Gail. Sure. <laughs> like Gail is making perfect sense. I'm sorry, guys. Yeah. I'm Yeah. I feel like this is one of the few scripted moments in this movie. Yeah. Sure, yeah. Gail. Whatever. <laughs> it's very much the Brady Bunch, like sure Jan kind of thing, you know? Yeah. 
<laughs> um, but I'm I'm pro I'm very pro Gale in 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 that whole um that whole thing. But in t- like, frankly, I wanted a few more moments li- like that. You know, it, it it's it's refreshing to hear yeah, like a full conversation um compared to what we get a lot through a lot of the movie. Yeah. yeah. Around the campfire, jeez. Oh, I can't wait for Monkey's Paw. Um, all right. Greg is Gail's boyfriend, right, I guess? It's yeah. Greg and Gail. Okay, good. Then yeah. Skip and Bobby? Yep. Yep. And then the last couple is Nancy and Greg. Joel. Joel? Joel. Wasn't it Joel? Joel doesn't sound right. I'll find it later in my notes if I, I need to. But the main couple early on is, is Gail and Gre- Greg anyway. So the now it's nighttime. Gail is gleefully applying her makeup. Now they're around the fire. Ha- here we go with the quiet conversations. Presumably in my notes I write because the screenwriter didn't want to write dialogue. So <laughs> <laughs> we're all on the same page. And it's 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 it, it's frustrating to like watch people... Almost, it's like I think you're having a conversation, and we hear a couple words that we can make out, but, but no, yeah. none of it goes anywhere. It's so like, come on. It's exhausting. Yeah, at one point, Gail's was like, "Yeah, and somebody was." Cu-. Oh yeah, Ava's right as Joel. Good yeah. work, Ava. Yeah, but, take that, everybody. <laughs> it's, yeah, you're right. It, it is frustrating. Like that, you you hear some snippets, and you're like. You, you, the parts you hear are not interesting either, though. Like, no. It's like the most boring story that Gail is telling. Yeah, and it's not something that's even appropriate to like hang it out. She's yeah. telling a story about trying to get out of a car that's it's trapped in water. She <laughs> yeah. says, there's so much pressure, I couldn't get out. You know what I did? I rolled the window down and back. Wow. So they must have told her talk about something, and she's like, "Okay, I'll talk about how to get out of a car that's gone into a lake." <laughs> I know, but I, and so then and weird. then, but then, what's so weird is like the other people's reactions. They like just kind of laugh, they're right? Riveted. Instead of they're like, they don't know what to do. They're <laughs> pretending to be riveted, but then they go like, "Ha ha!" And then it's like, what? It's like there, no one was actually playing off of each other. They're literally just all talking. Just to like, I don't know, I guess, like you said, they must have assumed that at some point, whatever would be dubbed over. So they didn't really concern themselves with what they were actually saying, yeah. which is like my big question about the whole monkey's paw thing is like, is this a, is this something that was a stage direction and they told him or did he just start telling this story because it's a well-known story and it's a good like horror story around a campfire type story to tell. And so because like. Even when he's telling the story, it's not like there are pieces, there are chunks that are kind of mumbled too. You know, it's not yeah. like it's like clear. It's not like, you know, when you're when you're trying to do dialogue for a movie where you want to speak clearly or whatever so that your voice comes through. Like, it doesn't sound like that at all. Yeah. It's the latter, what you said. Yes. <laughs> they, I, they say on the commentary that uh, they just told him, talk about the monkey's paw because it's like a public domain story and it's a thing that people tell. But the problem is no one really knows the story that well and he wasn't prepared to do it. So <laughs> cuz he doesn't get it right. He like the big payoff at the end he's he he just he just stop basically just stops the story. We're going to actually hear that in a minute. Before we oh, get okay. there there's a close up of a creepy crawly insect and then back to the campers and then a raccoon and then back to the campers then a tarantula back to the campers then the snake back to the campers owl campers more insects campers snake eating a mouse campers ants eating a worm <laughs> I'm not joking <laughs> listeners that, that's what happens no, it, it's really what happens it's a lot of it's so it's so bizarre because like I don't these cuts don't make any sense <laughs> and where they cut back and forth into the dialogue that they do keep and or elect to keep it's just like it doesn't it's so weird what a mess. Yeah, it hurts your brain when you're trying to you're trying to find patterns and make sense of it and it, it it's confounding you while you do but in, in a very pleasant way <laughs> um, <laughs> it is pleasant I mean, you know, it's like, it was like, I don't even know how far into the movie we are at this point. 
Not, um, that, not that far, really. 27 it, but, minutes. But, yeah. 27 minutes? Yeah. So, oh, okay, so we're a third of the way into the movie. Um, and it's like, it just, <laughs> it was just bizarre because you were like, you're still kind of waiting for something to happen. And like, and then the when they take these, you know, you're finally at the camp scene, your camp fire scene, and you think like, okay, now finally something is going to happen. <laughs> and it really kind of doesn't. Right. Yeah. Like, yeah, like, we it still takes a step back. With yeah, mumbling. and we still don't even really necessarily know the names of all the characters or like any you know other than the 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 blonde other than Gail she's the only one who really stands out at that point and um yeah. it, you know much like Psycho we're shocked when uh, Gail's gonna be um, offed soon much like Janet Lee was and then it be it, it really becomes um, Nancy's movie but. Uh, uh-huh. so we, um, we got, yeah, the, all those cuts back and forth. One, one moment where they clearly did have a tiny plot point was you, you notice Bobby is a little upset that, um, her guy, what is it again? Skip. Skip. Skip, Skip is, seems interested in Gail's story. Wait, was that right? Am I right about that? Or is it Nancy? Who's mad at, uh, Skip. Bobby, Bobby, Bobby gets mad at Skip, yeah. Okay, because Skip is into Gail, it seems a little bit, right? Well, that she was mad at him because he's when she went to go to the bathroom. Remember, he scared okay. her. Maybe I used she the wrong that. name. Maybe it's Nancy who's mad at um the other guy. She's not mad at Joel. They're like, bro, they're like super flirty. Okay. Yeah. So, she mentions like she mentions out oh, that you noticed Gail. Okay. And he's like, okay. oh, who doesn't notice? Who does? Her, but, Everyone but, notices she's... Gail. With her, with her shirt. Did you guys notice her shirt? Uh, yeah, hands off something. Don't, yeah, hands off my tuts with with a picture of um the Sphinx. Yeah. Yeah. Oh wow, that's a collector's item. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, Nancy. So, oh, go Tom. Before we go away from the thing, I, I'll tell you about the alternate footage. Uh, Ooh. Yes, because this this all happens. The alternate footage basically takes a lot of the, it's the nature yeah. shots away, right? It's Yeah, when they sit down at the campfire, Joel starts telling a story, like the monkey's paw story, right, in the in the version we watched. But in the international version, he starts telling a story of the fire, mm. the gypsy fire. So it, it, it's, you know, it, it's him, he starts telling it, and then it cuts to the footage, and then it's in the footage for like, 17 minutes and then it comes back wow so it's not it's not him telling it inter interwoven you know yeah so it is like and they said this was filmed you know years later with totally different cast like set in the past like at this gypsy camp in the woods and it's um it's it's crazy it's basically just tells the story of what their camp was like and there's a situation with one of the locals where one of the local women gets involved with one of the gypsies and then she accuses him of assaulting her and then the locals go after the gypsy camp and set it on fire and that's how the fire kicks off Uh but it is extensive there's like a dancing scene there's multiple couples involved where you see them getting amorous uh it, there, there's, you know, there's subplots. It is so elaborate. You would not. Yeah. How would how would this guy know that? Yes. You no, know, he would say like, "Hey, there was a big fire here years ago." He would be like, "Oh yeah." And then Gypsy <laughs> Donna was was interested in this other guy, but then he he ate too much of her bread one night, so he, she didn't like him anymore. Yeah, that's yeah, th- that's amazing. And and also. Not particular off the top of my head, I would say not particularly marketable to horror movie fans. Versus if they add in more gore or more nudity, as there was some, there was some nudity. Uh, oh, okay, there you go, there you go. That's that's that, something. It was obviously intentional for that. Okay, okay, I, I get that for well, the market. But I mean, it's not like it. It's so long, like you forget what movie you're watching. Right. Like, uh, uh, watching the gypsy movie now and they start to worry about the gypsy lady like you're kind of rooting for her now like i forgot i was even watching the praise still you know yeah and he comes back and then joel says his line like and then he went he wanted to get a good night's sleep ah. and then how the story ends so it ends the same way there wow which is super 
weird. Like it doesn't really make sense. Really, it makes actually more sense in the in this version than the monkey paw version. Uh, but it's still a little weird. Yeah. Well, I think they, based on your description, I think um, I'd rather not watch that. Do you agree, Tom? Like, I think they made the right move for the American yeah. version. So they they included that and they cut out the scenes of the ranger playing the banjo, the ranger telling the frog story. They cut those out. Mm. So it was it's just this, and there's less uh, of the lighthearted stuff that maybe the American version people remember. Well, we I mean, we need the ranger um, playing the banjo. That's that's necessary yeah. for the movie. So um, yeah, not negotiable. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think one of the nice things about that scene is that it really establishes the where the ranger is. Yeah. So he he doesn't like it's not like he's a red herring and he's not supposed to be a red herring. Like he's always kind of got a hero in this movie. Like you never th- you never really doubt that the ranger is a good guy. That's a good well, point. Well, yeah. when he's talking There's... to the baby deer though, um I yeah, I started yeah. to wonder. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> we're jumping ahead but I, I just wanted to make sure we told that story of the that that's like the famous lost footage or whatever but it wasn't really part of the it wasn't lost it was not yeah, filmed. It, was, it was added later it was added later Very uh, interesting yeah all right um and, well i one just last thing on that the, one of the things that the the liner notes talk about is the the way they actually cut that footage into the film is pretty interesting um, and like, if you don't know about it, Charlie, you should probably be like, I think you'd be interested in reading about it because it's just like, they talk a lot about like, it was very meticulous. Like the things that they cut it, like, it's not like, oh, they tried to just take like the end of one reel and join the next, you know, like ah. it was like they did that they like did these like minute, like painstaking, yeah. you know, and this is film, right? It's not like, you know, yeah. it's a digital file that you can like, just, you know, okay, we're going to join it here like little little lips here and there that's what walter merch did for apocalypse now redux yeah okay wow. so Similar. one 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 last question so basically what we watched is the director's vision and what tom watched was international producers wanting to add to it am i right yeah the international one is not approved by the director all right officially all right good the one we watched was good <laughs> <laughs> So, I mean, I like it. I like standing. Real quick, last question. Do we get all of the shots of the animals in the international version? Yeah. The it, animals stay. That, that stuff is still in there. Okay. That's why it's so fascinating. Yeah, that is pretty fascinating. <laughs> That's some, They add 17 minutes to the movie and keep the shots of, of the frogs. You know, That's something. All right, all right. So they, they must have added more because they cut out the ranger scenes. They must have added like twenty. Must have... <laughs> <laughs> okay, Nancy <Anyway>. and <laughs> Nancy and um, Joel is Joel with Nancy? Yes, okay. Joel's I'm with sorry, Nancy. I'm so bad at names. Nancy and Joel are talking about constellations until Greg steps in and over explains all that he knows about the stars in 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 a in a comedic moment. Classic. That's classic Greg for you, huh? Um, now Nancy's it's actually cut out of the international version too. I missed that part. Oh, but I like that when he, it gives him a little more personality, you know? Yeah. It's typical yeah. Greg. Yeah. In the international version, they never really knew Greg. Uh, no. anyway, now Nancy's boyfriend, um, again, <laughs> Joel, Joel, start, Joel tells the monkey's paw uh, story. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. Yes. Uh, it comes in and out for the viewers because uh, the shots are from the POV shots of the bad guy who's watching him. Bad guy's riveted by the monkey paw story. Um, it's a pretty long story, but let's hear just um, the shocking conclusion, the last minute of it. One night, the woman was pulling on the sleeve. It was late at night. She woke him up, and she said, I want my son. I said, what do you mean? I want my son. Get me my son. Get the paw. So he got the paw. And he wished. He took the paw in his hand. And he said, I wish for my son to be alive. 
two hours later, there was a knock on the door. It got louder and louder and louder and louder. <laughs> the wife ran downstairs, and the old man went to the window, and he saw this decrepit-looking thing banging against the door was a son. The old woman ran to the door. As she opened it, he got the monkey's paw, and he had his last and final wish. Well, what was it? Oh, uh, <laughs> you wished for a good night's sleep. <laughs> Whoever is booing there is speaking for all of us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love booing. Which is, it's not even the actual ending of that story. I know, the actual ending is that he then wishes that the, the kid was dead again because, uh, right? That was buried, reburied or whatever. Yeah. 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 So, um, yeah, that just just kind of deflating, uh, deflating me again. You know, I feel very deflated uh, throughout much of this movie. But I do like yeah. the tone, the way that he tells a story. I, he's got a little rhythm to his uh, voice. It's kind of fun. Yeah. I mean, it's Tom. Tom spent most of the movie telling me how creepy he found Joel. Um, he's, he's a little creepy. He's got, you know, he's got creepy eyes. I will acknowledge that. Yeah. But, but at least he had a little bit of an interesting personality where is like, you know, Skip was just your stock doofus. Yeah, Jack kind of guy. Jack kind of doofus guy. And then Greg, well, we don't really, other than the celestial interests and no, and finding out that he's very rich. Yeah. <laughs> we don't know anything about Greg. Right. In and passing. He's like berated by Gail. In passing, <laughs> I, they're going to say Greg's dad's a millionaire. I love that. Charlie, what do you got? Can I say Joel has a little bit of a uh, Marjo Gortner vibe? <laughs> what is that? <laughs> you can well, say it. None of us are going to know what it means. <laughs> okay. Next. That's okay. It's a creepy actor who was in some 70s stuff. But look him up and you'll be like, hey, that's like Joel from The Prey. Charlie was right. Is it, he's an earthquake. Oh, okay. I'm going to I'm gonna Google this right now so I can look. The militia up. guy. <laughs> Pee break. One, one of the- Oh, go, go I'm sorry. One other random point when they're on the fire, they they are smoking out of the pipe they found. Did you notice yeah, that? Yeah, that's weird. What a what a thing that's been glommed on and chewed on for years by a <laughs> random stranger, then sat on the forest floor with bugs crawling all on it, and they're like, "Sign me up." <laughs> I <laughs> put that in my mouth. Said, yeah. <laughs> all right, it's pee break time. Um, two of the guys are peeing at the same tree. One nearly urinates on the other's leg. Uh, Bobby goes off to urinate. G- Gail enjoys some music on a radio on a hammock as uh, her guy is blowing up a mattress. He wants to listen to the woods, but she will not have it. She just digs these tunes, you know? It's like with these rockabilly do it. I love it. Bing, beep, 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 beep. It's like the the cheesiest like rights free music they could possibly find. It, oh, that's another article for the movie. Like so often when they turn on the music, it's just this like the the equivalent of of stock footage for just like um yeah. uh, like He's rock, rock music. <laughs> yeah, seriously. Um, Every time. Okay, so now Bobby, um, who who is peeing, she she, <laughs> so what? It's her boyfriend who scares her, right? Yes. He's scared. Okay, let's just make a point about Bobby and this peeing thing in the woods. Bobby is wearing overalls. She's wearing oh, this is a choice that she made to mm. wear overalls in the woods. That is a very bold choice because let me tell you, peeing in the woods. When you're a girl, it's already very complicated. Peeing while wearing overalls, even in a normal bathroom stall, is complicated. Yeah. So, like, <laughs> electing to do this is just, just so, uh, like, I was just like, what the hell? Come on, Bobby. <laughs> Demands of fashion. I mean, she just... <laughs> now, okay, but she's so frightened by boyfriend that she actually becomes unconscious. She yeah. faints. Yeah. When he when he scares her, she literally faints. Yeah, that's rare. That doesn't happen in movies too much. It, it, you would almost expect that she was faking to prank him back or something. Like, whoa. Yeah. I mean, in theory, it could happen, but it, it does not happen a lot. Now, it was kind of 
it's actually a funny scene though, because like she just but but the problem was she faints, she's on the ground, and you don't actually get any payoff. Like no one freaks out, it just cuts to the next couple or whatever. That's true, yeah. And the next thing you know, she's not putting out and he's all like, Ooh. and I'm like, Well, you deserved it. You made your girlfriend pass out. Yeah. I know, but they definitely didn't like dwell on the fact that she was unconscious on the forest floor, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, That's scary. What 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 happens next, folks? Um, is one of the one of the great moments in film history. We cut back to good old Ranger Mark, and for it takes. I don't know if we'll listen to a full ninety seconds of this, but this is what happens. Well, I'll set the scene real quick. He's sitting, I guess, in his his cabin. Tom, it looks like a cabin, right? Yeah, the ranger station. He's got a cores. He gets a cabin. He's yeah. got a because it's got his picture of, of like his family. Looks like his, a picture of his grandparents or his parents there. He's got a, a can of cores. He's got um yeah. like oh, cores uh, commercial all over this thing. A rug, like a tapestry on the wall, lots of um of greenery in, in his in his place and, and a banjo. And and this is what happens for the next ninety seconds, folks. Tuning up. I could I could let it run, but um, wow! And and then the, the, oh, the, the Tom, it. Tom, tell, that Tom, tell Tom, <laughs> tell him tell him what happens though, right near the end of this shot. Um, he stops playing. Stops playing, takes a sip of sip of beer, and then starts playing again. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Okay, I thought I was making sure it wasn't something else, but yeah, it's just life in the cabin, you know. You stop. <laughs> And keep going. Unbel- <laughs> it's like, like they they had to keep it running. You know, it, it it felt like he was he was like, wait, are you still filming? You know, like <laughs> it, it, it feels like if you went over to his cabin in real life, you might be like, I'm getting a little bored. Can we do something else? Yeah. But they're like, the whole thing's going in the movie. Ninety Tuning seconds. Up everything. Ninety seconds. Great. That is crazy. This won us over in the original in the original screening. We, it's our we favorite scene. We talked about scene. this for you know a couple decades. Yeah, At the book played. signing, Tom, you played it for everybody. Remember? That's that's right. People loved it's, it. it. It's a magical moment. I mean, that was a big crowd. We shared it with like a massive learned crowd, and they and they dug it. I totally forgot about that. I just want to really just emphasize for the listeners, folks. In the middle of the movie, we see a character who we've barely seen in his house playing the banjo for 90 seconds by himself. Then he stops, he sips his beer, then starts playing again. That's a scene of the movie. Um, That is an entire scene of the movie. That's when it became genius, the second playing. Yes! It was good. That icing on the cake, though, just takes it to a level that, that <laughs> blows your brain. Everyone at the at our book signing didn't know that anything like that could exist on Earth. Yes. So we opened their minds. They're like, wait, all movies are professional. No one plays a banjo for a minute and a half randomly and then sips cores. It has but nothing. But they can. But no- they do. And they did. Nothing to do with the rest of the movie, really. Just that he is in it, you know? Like, just they're like... Let's check in with the ranger. Let's see what he's doing right now. While, like, you know, intense things are, are presumably happening in, at the campsite where these people are being stalked, let's just stop there for a moment. Let's check in with what the ranger's doing. He's playing the banjo. Uh, hangout movie. That's what this is. It's a hangout movie. We're just movie. hanging out with friends. Nancy, meanwhile, says poor Greg to uh, her boyfriend. I'm sorry. Nancy's boyfriend is Joel, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, and um, uh, poor Greg. He says <laughs> Greg's dad has fifty million dollars. 
I don't know why. I just love this this little detail about Greg's family. Greg's going to inherit all of it, Charlie. All of it. Oh, that's such a big thing to drop on the audience so so quickly right there. It seems so poorly thought out. I was just like, of all the details, his dad has $50 million. Nancy's referring to the fact that Gail pushes Greg around. I know what you're thinking. I'd like to hear some of this conversation, so I'm going to let you hear some of it. Also, as a bonus, we're going to hear the – It's before we go into that, we're going to hear the post sip – right after the guy sips the beer, this is where he picks back up, and this was the this is the moment that people just cheer for. And what's really fun about it is he sips the beer – it kind of just starts tuning up again and then it cuts you know like he doesn't even get back into the song before they cut let's hear it <laughs> that's it right there that's it they held it after the sip of the beer so that he could do that little tune all right let's hear uh, nancy and, and her guy talking poor greg poor greg what do you mean poor his dad is worth $50 million, and one day, that's going to be all poor Greg's. You know that's not what I mean. Why does he let Gail walk all over him? Have you ever taken a good look at her? No, but I bet you have. Well, I'm uh, only human. Says who? Sorry you didn't wait for me? Yeah, now come on. Oh, meanwhile, okay, now the more antics at the campsite. We're going to hear this. Now this is Gail and Greg. Greg is trying to, to, to put a move on Gail, but she's, uh, she's, she's playing defense. So you're sorry. I'm sorry. You love me? Yes. Tell me. Tell you what? Tell me that you love me. I love you, goddammit. I love you. No, you don't. You'd say anything right now. I won't. I mean, I do. I love you. You do? Really? Honest, on my honor. Cross your heart? Cross my heart. And hope to die? All right. And hope to die. Oh, Come on, Bobby. Okay, now this is Bobby and uh, Skip. And Bobby's mad um, about how she was frightened uh, to the point where she went unconscious. Everybody else is dead. Stop it, you octopus! I'm still pissed off at you. You scared me half to death. It was a joke. What was your sense of humor? Some joke. Very funny. Ha ha. Well, here's my little joke. I'm not putting out. Bobby, how could you do this to me? Easy. Just watch. All right, so that's some. Good, that's the kind of interaction we want. We want more of this. Um, I'm, yeah. I'm happy with all of those little moments right there. Uh, especially um, uh, Greg. Greg is such a <laughs> such a doofus. You know, like, yeah, on my honor. Yeah, I love you. Yeah. You gotta wonder where where they are in in relation to each other. You know, because like they're all around the same fire, but it's just like <laughs> yeah. pretty far away. They, I think they they specifically did not stay close to one another because they are all clearly going to be intimate with one another. Yeah. It's very weird. Um, or they, at least they plan to because uh, <clears throat> Skip ruined his, his chances. Big yep. idiot. Yeah, Skip. So that, that that's some fun moments. Uh, now Nancy and Greg um, are very slowly kissing. I don't know if you guys remember this. Oh, Nancy and Joel. Thank you. Very slow. <laughs> very slow kiss, kissing scene yes. going on there. Very close up. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. It lasts for a long time. Yeah, I was they, very they, uncomfortable. They, we're gonna see the slow theme again with the shampoo, right? They they sort of have a slow nature. <laughs> That's in their what they do. They slowly yeah. kiss. They yeah. slowly shampoo each I other. I think it's supposed it's to be slower. like you know. I mean, they're the they're the ones who are like the romantic ones, right? Like they're the they're like the couple that's meant to last, and like you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. and then you know, with with Gail and Greg, like. She's kind of what? She's probably a little bit of a gold digger. She, she's the like trophy girlfriend. She's like the blonde, you yeah. know, super overtly sexual. And then you've got Bobby and Skip who are like 
they, they're just they're fascinating in like how dorky they are even though like like skip acts like he's like big man on campus type jock and, and then but then like bobby is actually she's more a velma type than anything else yeah mm-hmm. yeah <laughs> um all right uh gail and greg are going at it hardcore um the bad guy point of view i you know i like that we we almost never see the bad guy it's a, it's all point of view and whatnot and i'm i'm happy with that um yeah. we don't see what's cool about it though is that i mean i think don't isn't this a scene where you see a flash of the fire yeah does he have does he have a flash does he have a flashback there i'm pretty sure yeah there's I, I so like i said to tom i asked him at one point i was like did that inspire you guys for river beast because you know in river beast i think you guys have the like the the red right. light that flashes before the monster shows up so before mm-hmm. of some of these kill scenes you see a flash of the fire it happens back with the older couple you see a flash of the like big forest fire that happened yeah. way at the beginning of the movie and that's when you know like oh there's like a death scene gonna happen yeah yeah but when, when we did it it was more like a marketing gimmick that like yeah. an imaginary producer would have done and oh, in this movie, from... it's like, yeah, actual, yeah. like, those memory flashes. You're, you're right, though. I forgot about that. Did, does he see a fire that triggers that? Yeah, because like, the fire is burning, I think. The campsite? Yeah. I'm uh, guessing that he sees the okay. campsite fire, and that's what triggers yeah. the memory of the fire. I mean, but there's a, for a bad guy, there's actually very, it, in the movie, like, I think knowing the gypsy version where that, tells the story like that actually gives you the background on this monster or that you know bad guy no, whatever he's, he's human he, and he, he has human. an axe and he has, <laughs> i was just kidding definitely human uh, yeah, what is but, the yeah what's the tagline it's he's not, not, human, not human and he's got an axe but he is human right yes yeah. that's why we love it and yeah. he doesn't have an axe he yes, has he an axe a- in the first in the first just in that first scene. In that first scene. Okay. When he chops off Frank's head. That's awesome. That's the only time he uses an axe. All right. Gail, um, Gail and Greg are going at it, um, but then she notices that uh, she notices the guy. Uh, Greg is not interested in, in, um, in looking into it. He says it's an animal, or maybe it's Skip. Um Greg goes to check out the noise. Gail puts her shirt back on. Classic shirt, like I mentioned. Two sphinxes with the phrase, keep your hands off my tuts. Legendary <laughs> t-shirt. Man, I love it. Yeah, it, it, is, it is one special shirt. <laughs> <laughs> it was worth making the movie for the shirt. Oh, what a shirt. Yeah, uh, maybe on eBay we can we can find one. That would be pretty cool. Uh, uh, POV <laughs> of the bad guy who keeps having the flashbacks of that fire, as Ava uh, mentioned. Uh, Gail is getting smothered with a sleeping bag as Greg continues to to uh, look for the origin of the noise. So so that's what. So Gail gets killed as Greg's off trying to figure out what the noise is. We get a super short shot of the banjo player <laughs> again before we return to Greg who sees an owl before his lantern goes out, matches, he says. Gotta find the stupid matches. I love when characters talk to themselves. Don't you, Charlie? It's, yeah, it's like a bit of Americana. It's fun. As he lights a match, his neck is sliced open, and the owl flies away. Is it sliced open, or is that just raw, brute, like, force with the hands of the bad guy? Tom? Mm, It seems like more of a slice. In that yeah. case, like maybe he has claws now or something. Okay. His nails have grown out. I don't know, but it seems more like a yeah. kind of slice. Yes, kind of. it does. I would like to applaud the movie for what what happens next. And what happens next is the remaining characters don't know that the other two have died, thus keeping the tone light because they they're not terrified. They just they think that their friends ran off and they're a little bit concerned, but they can still have fun. And it, in a lot of movies, once this happens, it's just all frightened, scared, running, dark, and, and, and there's no fun. But this maintains the fun right up to the end. So uh, mm-hmm. kudos no to point. them. Yep. It's morning. The fire is still burning as Nancy and uh, her guy are sleeping. 
Now the ranger is tell. Oh man, the ranger's telling a boring story about a frog who wants advice on what to feed her babies, and then the, the big re- and he's making these weird facial gestures. Then there's a big reveal that he's telling the story to to a, a is that a fawn? Is that what you call a baby deer? Yeah, he's telling. Did you did you did you take a clip of this? Because this is. I didn't. I should have. I don't know why. I was just so like it was so jarring. I didn't even think to write down the the time that it happened. What is going on? Like, Im, like w- again, it's much like the um, what's it called story? The um, monkey paw story. Like the cameraman's like, all right, uh, t- tell a story to this fawn, and the guy's like, oh, okay. It's the yeah. wide mouth frog. What is it? The wide mouth. It's the wide mouth frog. No. So, so basically, the story is this: there's a frog with a wide mouth that's got to go find food, and he goes and he asks one animal, like, "Oh, what kind of food do you eat?" It's a bunny, and he's a bunny bunny. He's like, "Oh, I eat carrots," and he's like, "Man, eh, I'm not gonna feed that to my baby." And then he goes and he finds something else, and he keeps making these big gestures because he's he's making the wide mouth of the frog. Oh. And so then he goes up to the like other animal, I forget what it well, like the alligator, and he goes, What do you eat? And the alligator goes, Wide mouth frogs. And then the joke is that when he responds to the alligator saying, I eat wide mouth frogs, he like then shortens he like tightens okay. up his mouth. Okay. Oh, I don't know what that would be. I may smell that frog or whatever. And then he runs off. I didn't yeah. even I didn't even pick up on that. That um, shame on me. <laughs> So that and, and now I, is that like a fan, that's that's like a camp story kind of thing I guess yeah I, I it's probably you know it reminded me of the Gruffalo so I I've read that story a million times to my children so like I don't know if you guys know the story of the Gruffalo but it's like a mouse that's going through the woods and he keeps running into these things that would like to eat him and he says oh. Um, no, I, I, I'm going to go eat a, gru- I'm going to go meet the Gruffalo and the Gruffalo is, um, is going to, is going to eat you. Mm-hmm. So all the animals like run away. And then when he gets to the Gruffalo, the Gruffalo is like, oh, look, it's a mouse. I want to eat you. And he's like, oh no, I'm the scariest creature in the woods. And then he takes him back through the woods and shows him how all the creatures are afraid of him. But actually they're afraid of the Gruffalo because they think that. Oh, cool. So yeah, so it's got it's some sort of traditional story. It seems much like the monkey paw, and um, yeah, and you know, I I mean, it's one of those things. Um, I I didn't love it when I suffered through it, but um, I feel I feel stronger for having gone through it though, and, and much like the banjo playing scene and, and everything else. So um, it's, it's so out there, you can't not talk about it. Like we 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 have to talk about it. So it's got that going for it you know yes. all right joel and nancy um are just waking uh just waking up when the other guy comes to ask if they know where gail and greg are so that that's the situation happening there there's a lot of cutting back and forth here now we meet lester tile of the forest service did we meet him at the beginning did we see him no no because he mentions <laughs> that he witnessed Mark meeting the girls, but th- that was off camera, apparently. Um, yeah. He's an older man with a cane. He answers a phone call after several rings. He finally gets to it from Sergeant Parson of uh, the Dover Police Department. He's looking into the missing couple from the start of the movie. Uh, for the first time in 20 years, this couple missed opening day of school, and that just doesn't happen, Charlie. Nope. <laughs> Lester <laughs> Lester assures them that he's on the case and he writes two Your words campers. two <laughs> words on a piece of paper North Point this seems yeah. to cause a little distress for him uh, this guy's in the uh, um, the international version Tom uh, yeah okay yep. back in and the that, I just want to say that guy is Jackie Coogan that he's a pretty famous uh, actor Ah. He was he was he was in um, Adam's Adam family and the well, he was in the kid yeah and a lot of movies when he was younger. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. So it know. kind of it kind of fits that shock tradition, right, guys, of finding a guy who was sort of a name that you knew towards the end of their career. Yeah. Oh yeah, George Kennedy, uh, guy from Gilligan's Island. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, back in the woods, the kids are looking for their friends. Um, we also see a close-up of a grasshopper, a frog, and a snake. 
Uh, Nancy notices blood on a tree while she's looking for her missing friends. They return to the campsite. What more are they going to do? And, and she finds a match in the woods on the floor, which is yeah. amazing. <laughs> amazing work by Nancy. Now, presumably, oh, that's the match that he was looking for when he wanted to light the lantern? Uh, okay. Yeah. That would actually be held up as like an example of something that's hard to find that would never happen. Like, how am I going to do that? That's like finding a match uh, in a pine forest on the floor. (laughs) It's the exact thing she does without much trying. And it's not key to the plot, really, either, that she sees that. Oh, you're right. Um, Okay, they go back to the campsite, and then we see a shot of Gail's dead uh, body being dragged in a net. That poor actress, that that did not look pleasant. Um, No. Uh, Good for her. So let's listen as around the campfire they decide what they're going to do about this situation. What do you think we should do? I'm not sure. I think we should leave them a note and go on like we planned. Aren't you even worried about them? Well, sure I am. But look at it this way. All their gear's gone, right? What that means to me is they packed it up and took off. My bet is they went back. Without telling anybody? Skip's right. I mean, Gail's so dizzy, anything goes. Maybe Gail, but not Greg. Christ. Greg tags after Gail like a lost puppy. They went back for sure. Hey, why don't we uh, take a vote? Either we cancel out the trip and go back to the ranger station, or we leave him a note and uh, go on. Majority rules, okay? Sure. That's fair. I say we go on. Me too. Nancy? All right. I don't want to spoil everyone's vacation. Let's go on. Okay. Uh, I guarantee they'll show up. It's a guarantee right there from, from Danny. Uh, Nancy's the only one who's who's uh, trepidatious about uh, about this decision. And uh, this is yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. This what's fascinating to me is like <clears throat> Joel like puts it forward like this democratic thing, majority rules, um, and he doesn't actually end up taking a vote, right? Because Nancy casts the deciding vote. She's the only one who is probably going to vote no. It's pretty clear that he will probably vote yes to continue but it's like it was just interesting to me it was interesting setup that like the way he sets it up like if they had tied two and two amongst the couples like what would they have done like what was going to be the tiebreaker there was some major coercion going on there big time coercion yes. yeah yeah and at this point too it makes us think that the um the monster has some sort of uh, or killer has some sort of reasoning abilities right because he took the stuff. Thought, yeah, I mean, I I'm, I wonder if I doubt that a little bit, but uh, apparently that is the only explanation for what why the uh, camping gear is gone. Good point. Yeah. Um. But uh, you know, that's another scene that I, I wish there were more scenes like that. They they actually did a good job. Uh, all of them around the campfire just talking. Um. Some you know the acting was was acceptable, and it was fun to watch. I wish there was more of it. <laughs> Um, before continuing on, Nancy turns and says, almost to the camera, please let them be okay. Then she looks at the vultures above and is on <laughs> her way. <laughs> uh, Do we ever get a scene of Greg, Greg's body? No. No one no, wants so to see only... Greg. Maybe, uh, is he there when the scene with all the vultures? He's like, presumably he's you there. You might see a little bit of it. I forget. It's either, you definitely don't see him as much as you see the Gale, but. Yeah. yeah. And they, they said in the notes, in the liner notes, in the screenplay, they had originally written there was going to be like a shallow grave where they were both piled on top of each other. Mm-hmm. But like, they didn't shoot it for some reason. Yeah. And they just did the Gale scene and they never did anything else with him. Gotcha. Yeah. It was easier to put a few sticks on top of it. Yeah. Mark comes into the office where Lester explains that there's another lost couple at North Point. They're the Sylvesters, Frank and Mary, middle-aged, supposedly good campers. Mark is not concerned. Then Lester um, 
um, <laughs> takes some of his sandwich and likes it. What, what kind of sandwich uh, is it? Like cucumber? It's a cucumber sandwich. And mayonnaise? Yeah. Or cream cheese? Cream cheese, yeah. <laughs> this, is ep- this is epic. This, this is the this highlight is of the, the film. the best sandwich ever. Yeah. Oh, this is good. so good. This, this moment, I was... The tension yeah. over whether Lester was going to like it or not. Yeah. It, was, it was like, is that Mulholland Drive with the cappuccino? Where, where you know, if the guy's gonna like it or spit it out, but it, it's like that tension. Okay. I, I'm trying to think: is he gonna love it or is he is he gonna hate it? And you know, actually, then it's like, okay, he's okay with it. Yeah, that, that's he unique. Eats most of it. He, he wants, wants it. more. And, he wants and more. then he wants more. <laughs> and then he starts thinking about it some more. And I'm like, is he just hungry or has it actually? By the end, we have to assume that he might not be hungry anymore, and he actually is craving it. So there's been this transforming, transforming of his whole worldview, and it, and maybe even it's like a generational clash between the healthy youths with their newfangled sandwich and the old set, the old guard, yeah, yeah. all in the guise of this one sandwich showdown, which my, wins really, us really, over with love. Really, my my issue with cucumbers is I hate so the texture funny. of cucumbers. Yeah, but that doesn't. And I also with, don't like pickles. That has nothing to do with this. Yeah, game. but it. <laughs> I'm thinking of this sandwich and I'm so disgusted because how could you eat this sandwich with like mushy and then crunchy, like really hard crunchy and it's like wet crunchy and then bread? No. Yeah. Right. I am anti this sandwich. But, but uh, the scene is magic. The scene, the scene is actually, the, the scene is, what's hilarious about this scene is actually Lester puts Mark off the food because he starts telling a story about how the he was a firefighter and then there was and basically he gives us the cue into what the killer who the killer might be when he tells us the story and the talks about the body that he finds of the young boy. Um, he actually during this when he's recounting the story of the campfire he said it's fifteen to twenty years ago. Did you notice that? Uh. Where it's it should 15, be. Ago, it was actually like 32, 32 or, or whatever. But uh, it's just a minor thing. But. He tells this story, yeah. Tom? Does he tell the story uh, in the international version? No, it's the same. Just He just, you know, sums it up quickly. Okay, let's um, let's hear a little bit of that, that talk um, with um, the end of his description of that story right here. But I saw something back there. I just got a glimpse of it, but well, it disappeared in the brush. Well, what was it? The only way I could describe it was that it was a a young boy, and he was burnt like nothing you've ever seen in your life. <sighs> Wild stuff. The the uh, the young girl's voice was not uh, in the movie. That was. Uh... <laughs> That was coming from the sky. That was the child. All right, sorry about that. No, please, please. I just it, to go to bed. <laughs> all right, on we go. Um, so Mark offers to go up there to check out North Point. He'll take a tranquilizer gun. He doesn't. He doesn't need the thirty out six. Of course, he doesn't need it. But Lester, Lester says, I think you should. Mark, no way. Get out of here with your thirty out six. I don't need it. Um. But Lester's like, all right, and hey, maybe uh, maybe you'll score with one of those uh, pretty hiker girls. You know, I saw you flirting with them uh, the other day. So that's uh, some good uh, good talk in there. Through all of this, there's a lot of weird quick cuts back to the hikers. Really strange stuff going on there, Charlie. Charlie, you've edited some movies. What, yes. what were you thinking when you were watching all that? I was I was just thinking that they're trying to spice it up, I guess, but uh, you know, keep things moving. But um, I don't know. It doesn't always it doesn't always work. Especially sometimes I was happy in the scene that that it was in a little bit more. And it, you know, I wasn't quite ri- they didn't reach a natural point of cutting away all the time. You're like, okay, nothing really big happened, and then you go to something else not really big happening, and then something <laughs> else. <laughs> it has a really bad sense of, like, how to sustain tension in this movie, which is what's, like, yeah. pretty... Like, like it's really... The last maybe ten minutes is tense, but right. before that, you've got 70 minutes of some very meandering... 
like weird, slow scenes. And they're just like, there's a lot of like random asides and some of them are clearly scripted. Some of them are clearly not scripted. And it, and it's, it, it's just a very, it's a very interesting choices that these 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 filmmakers made. Yeah. It's, it's all about the sandwich. That's where the tension is. Those he's taking <laughs> he's taking he's taking those bites. And as an audience member, I'm on edge of my seat. Is he gonna like it or is he not gonna? And he did, you know. And that that was that was an an exercise in intention, and it taught us all something. And he goes, he ends up eating the rest of Mark's half of the sandwich too. Uh, we should note. It's unbelievable. Yeah, it's it worked so well. You expect this old guy's not gonna like this healthy sandwich, and then he's just completely won over. Perhaps changed his entire diet. Oh yeah. Yahoo! The hikers found a cool swimming hole. The water's great. Again, we couldn't have this moment if they knew that their friends were dead. So it's a great thing that they they think Gail and Greg are just off um, gallivanting, and they can go enjoy the, the swimming hole. Yes. But um, God forbid we enjoy ourselves at the swimming hole with these people. Let's cut to Mark boringly hiking. Let's check in. <laughs> With Mark just walking <laughs> what, what, in the woods. Charlie, what do you got? Do either, do either of you guys have one other thing to mention about the swimming hole? I have more on my notes here, but uh, jump in. Go for it. Okay, okay. So uh, while, while they're splashing around, uh, you, you, you're going to mention the cut to the, uh, to the possible transformation to the monster with the giant eyes? Oh yeah, what is going on with the guy's eyes? Well, whose eyes are that? What is I? I okay. Yeah, well, let's get to it. So we're in order, but yeah, that, that that is so strange. Okay, um, Mark boringly hiking. Now back to the swimming hole, where very naturally, oh, so naturally, they're splashing each other. I believe that. I I I didn't feel it. Didn't feel anything like the director said. All right, splash each other, and they're like, uh, like this, you know, <laughs> and they're tackling each other. It's just gosh darn fun. God forbid we enjoy this anymore. We got to check in with Mark. He's found the note, which I I like the note because it begins, Dear Dummies. (laughs) So the the four hikers left a note for Greg and uh, Gail, and they're like, Dear Dummies, uh, here, you know, if you want to meet us, we're going to be at North Point or whatever. But but there's like an elaborate, like, map with. like elevation markings on it it is serious <laughs> thorough yeah so you hand that to gail and she's like what yeah <laughs> okay so now this is the next shot where it feels like one of the guys has like did he put monster contact lenses in his eyes to scare the- that's what i thought like we suddenly get a close-up i think it's of um skip maybe it's skip it is. It is. Well, it's that been established that he does pranks. Yes. So he's got monster eyes for just a second. <laughs> yep. Yeah. He took them in his pocket of his bathing suit, <laughs> went underwater, inserted them nat- to, to naturally kind of fit into his, his eye socket. Off a camera. Bit. All off up, camera, off right? Camera, yeah. Popped up as a monster. One second later, cut out. Not explained. It's either that or he he sort of tra- actually transformed into a monster for a second, but that's less likely. <laughs> it, it, unbelievable, though. For that to happen and not be referenced, it, it, why bother? It was so, it's so it's bizarre. So weird. Because it's literally no one, it doesn't come up again. He just plays this prank and no one, it's like, it's so weird because it's not even like they actually react to it all that much. There's not like you get a, an extended reaction time. No one screams. Like, it's just like, yeah. boom, 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 quick shot, quick shot, monster eyes, quick shot. <laughs> <laughs> like, what the hell just see? That's yeah. and exactly right. And it's not right. something that people do. It's not, it's not a shorthand, like all American joke that's normal to do. Like, like for example, pretending your fingers hurt and doing like this. Like, that's a thing everybody does. No one just carries around monster eyes that are, you might, you might even have more likely a mask that fits over your whole head than you would just have these, like, ping pong ball, like, looking yeah. monster eyes that you'd insert there. Essay, yeah. Another essay is pranks in, in horror movies. Oh, my goodness. They're oh, everywhere. Oh, yes. Oh, the pranks. Including the movie that was dark. Was Dorm That Drip Blood also known as pranks? Also known as yeah. pranks. Oh, I yeah. love it. Um, so, yeah, the monster eye thing happens. Now we see Mark open up a map, 
and a compass and look at it. Now we see uh, the map for a long for while. Liberty. Long while, Tom. <laughs> you're, you're the champion of this film, Tom. Defend that uh, shot. <laughs> I, it's, it's, it's soothing. You know, you, <laughs> That's you, right. That's right. You are there with him. You're like, this is, what would I do? You know, what gear would I have? What choices would I make? You could just you could be in that moment with him. Nancy washes Jill's hair as he caresses hey. her legs. It's a beautiful moment. It's a beautiful moment. It is so weird because these this these scenes between these two characters are like they belong in a different movie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like their whole storyline is very romantic and has nothing to do with anything else that's happening. Of all yeah, the it's... things that they could be doing, she's washing his hair. Like, oh, oh, it's lux- it's luxurious though. It is, it is, it is a spa level treatment <laughs> that this guy is randomly getting at the top of a rock. It's almost yeah. like like Barry Lyndon style, where it's like the slow zoom out, yeah, you know, and then like is. then he starts right. like he turns his head and starts kissing her. Like, wow, yep. back to Mark. What's he doing? <laughs> He's reading the map. <laughs> Gotta check in. We're just cross cutting so frequently between the hiker and the and the swimmers. Oh my goodness! Back um back to the swimmers. They're, okay. Oh, this is a confusing situation. Now they're back in their hiking gear. Nancy says to Joel, "Sure, you won't change your mind." I don't know what they're talking about at this point, but clearly, <laughs> turns out it's about um repelling down the the the, the cliff. So. That's yeah. what it's about. But keep in mind, they were just swimming. They've changed back into their hiking outfits um, so that they could say the girls goodbye. Are still in their suits. I'm sorry? The girls are still in their swimsuits. Oh, contraire. Yeah. Oh, contraire. No, no. Someone back me yeah. up on this. They yeah. are, they're, the girls are in full um, hiking gear no, for that they, shot. No, not yet. Not yet. They don't. They start getting dressed in a panic no, later, but not yet. No, then they get back into their bathing suit after. They're in their hiking <laughs> gear to say goodbye to the rock climbers, back in swim oh. gear. Oh, wow. That's so, like, I did not even miss that. Wow. That's crazy. I double-checked. <laughs> I double-checked. It was clearly a mistake, some continuity situation. Um, but I prefer to think that they're like, all right, done swimming. Let's put on our stuff. Bye. Have fun on the rock. All right. Let's go back and sun ourselves again. Um, yeah. Charlie, <laughs> you, did you notice? I no, I, I, I did not notice quite so well as you guys did. It was it was uh, shades of cheerleader camp, though, with the uh, sunning on rocks. A lot less silly hijinks, but uh, or maybe that's just a, a very common occurrence. Yeah, but that's, that's another cool. essay, sunning, uh, you know, sun tanning in horror movies. That I'd like to read that. Yeah, and with us, the girl is she really worried about the the tan line strap? Because oh, all nice. girls in horror movies are Can't quite possibly. concerned about okay. the. <laughs> Listen, she takes off the, the. I was very the, so this scene. She yeah, she yeah. unties her top tie, unties the ones on the back, but then leaves one string hanging across her lower back. Uh, what's the point? Yeah, it's like, come on. And I was like, if you're going to untie the back, then you make sure that it's not co- touching any part of your back. Because right. if you are, you know, and especially if it's the 70s, you're probably not really using SPF anything. So you're going to burn. Mm. <laughs> you will have a stripe of white on your back. Good point. I think the actress knew it was there, and but knew that trying to adjust it might reveal and revealing end up revealing too much so she's like i'm just leaving it and the director's like yeah whatever good enough anyway yeah she adjusts it later because when they come back to her later she has moved it down yeah Bobby. but it was like that initial thing i i was like tom that is so unrealistic <laughs> <laughs> these you know before you're on the show there were lots of uh, the female point of view that we definitely weren't getting so it's very good um the um before the girls are um, sunning themselves, though, when they, they bid adieu to the rock climbers, um, Bobby says to her guy, hey, I'm sorry about last night. Which she, she has no reason to apologize, by the way. Yeah. And But she's like, tonight is going to be different. And he's like, oh, yeah. So life is good right there. Joel, yeah. Joel promises Nancy he won't hurt himself. 
Uh, and now the girls, like I said, are back in their bathing suits and sunning themselves. We have the whole strap situation, which we've covered. Charlie. <laughs> That's like all sorts of foreshadowing there, you know, like for like, hey, tonight is going to be your lucky night. And hey, I promise I'll be fine. Time to go dangle from some rocks. It's poignant. It's poignant, right, Charlie? Wouldn't you yeah, say? It's point, it is poignant, it's yeah. Poignant. So poignant. <laughs> Nancy thinks she hears something. Bobby assures her that there's nobody here but us chickens. Bobby, Bobby's got some good lines. She's got the octopus line too, I think, right? Mm-hmm. I've never heard anyone call someone an octopus. Or is that like because he's being too handsy with her? Was that the idea? It's because he's being too handsy, yeah. Okay, so. okay. I like it. I like it. Um, the guys relaxedly prepare to repel down the big cliff. It feels to me like... Um, that shot is on like a flat rock that where there's no cliff nearby, and then they just have a cut to a cliff. Didn't you get that feeling? Yes. Oh, no. In yeah, fact, sorry. I heard them say that that was the case. Okay. But it was good enough for me. Oh, I, I wouldn't totally. want actors to be on this cliff yes. and everything. And I, I want to tell you one other thing. Whenever I watch one of these 80s movies, I'm always jealous of their really cool sneakers. I don't know if you guys ever feel this, but when they're up there on the rock, like, man, those those cool, like, Asics, like, the, the really, like, light nylon ones, they look pretty comfy. And uh, I wish I had those. <laughs> yeah, I yeah, don't I, notice that. But I was yeah. mostly struck by the, the extended crotch shots that we got. Oh, it was scene. awful when he's putting on his... Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that was <laughs> bad. <laughs> 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 The, the, literally it felt like it took like three minutes for them to get into this gear and you're just they're like literally just focused on the guy's crash it's like oh my god yeah they could have just had like the final thing where they clip it and he goes good and yeah. then you know why show all the dragged out detail <laughs> um so now mark uh mark arrives at the uh, bodies of gail and greg where the vultures are uh, are swarming and uh, and eating. Yes, Charlie. Nature shots and our main characters finally come together. It's all finally. been working towards. It's all. Us. It all Is makes that sense now. It's it all kind of magic. makes sense now. I see what they were getting at. I get it well, now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, meanwhile, the rock guys are still doing their rock stuff. Um, I, I, I'll give them credit. I mean, that's some, some good shots. It's beautiful. They had to do some, some real dangerous stuff up there, and they did a good job, really good job. Um, Mark has a flashback to meeting... Oh, yeah, so when Mark sees Gail's... Um, M- Ranger Mark sees Gail's dead body, he has a little f- flashback to when he met her a few days earlier. He, now he's totally freaking out. In case you forgot who it was. Right. Well, and then what What I like about this scene, though, is that then he actually turns around and throws up. He does? Oh, does he? Doesn't he? Or is remember. it? One of the girls throws up at the top of the rock. Oh, that was, oh, that was yeah, it. Yeah, a... I thought it was like, there was one scene where I was like really impressed because I was like, that would be someone's actual reaction. Yeah. Yeah. Or the sandwiches. He's like, one too many cream cheese and cucumber. <laughs> Unre- unrelated to the body. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the vultures are surrounding him. He almost shoots one of them, but then he stops and remembers Lester's words about the darts not being enough firepower. Don't worry, Lester, he says to nobody. I'll take care of myself. <laughs> like, <what? laughs> I don't like. Okay, wh- why are Lester's words um, applicable to this situation? Like, with what? What is going? Like, why does he Maybe. have to hear uh- Lester's words there, Tom? Uh, the only thing I can think of, maybe if he had the the shotgun, he would have fired. And but then he didn't. He held had to hold back, and so now he's on his own with his decisions, you know. And he's kind of reassuring himself he he can do it, you know. He's he's reiterating to Lester that he can take care of himself, even though he made probably the wrong choice with the the gun. Lester, I'm on my own. He might say, <laughs> Charlie. It's- Having seeing Lester again there is kind of made me think they could have had that actor for like three, two, three hours. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's not in the movie a lot, and he doesn't move from that chair. I bet you they busted through that. I love it. Yeah, yeah. All right. Borgnine in uh, what's that movie he's in? Ernest Borgnine in which one? 
in that 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 movie from the eighties with the street gangs and <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> so, anyway. Anyway. Uh Joel watching his buddy repel down the rock is killed in the typical fashion from behind with the old head twist. Um then the bad guy starts messing with the rope and uh, he cuts it in um the girls here, the um, whoever the guy, who, just Skip, Skip screams as he falls to his death. Uh, Mark hears it too. The girls quickly get dressed off camera, I guess, right? Off camera, they get dressed, and then yeah, but they have to, like start getting their clothes on, but then it's right. Okay, so yeah. they quickly, they're like. He's dying quickly. Let's let's put our stuff on. I guess it makes a little sense. You don't want to be running through the um the forest in practically naked, you know. So yeah. mm-hmm. So I'm okay with it, but it does feel a little like uh ordering uh the juju uh beads or what are we, um in Seinfeld, you know, when you find out that the guys in the hospital and you still get the candy. Yes. Yeah. Um yeah. So um, they find Joel dead on the top of the rock. Bobby, here's your your moment. Uh, your favorite, one of yes. your favorite moments. Bo- the vomit. Well, okay, that was my favorite moment. I just felt like you know, so many times these people, like you, they they encounter a dead body and like no one, like they don't react. And I appreciated the fact that like these two girls have very distinct reactions to as, seeing. Him. As a counterpoint. I'm going to say, while it might be um, realistic, I, I, I'm i very opposed to vomit in um, in, oh, in movies. I, like I, I, I agree with you. I never yeah, want to see anyone know. vomit. And when it was happening, I was like, oh, come on. But yeah, I don't want to see I either. agree. You're right. You're right. It's realistic. You're absolutely right. And I, it's like, well, it's one of those things that I appreciate on an intellectual level, but actually I don't actually enjoy watching people vomit at all that's yeah. like no nobody does. <laughs> no. i mean i don't and it's i i you know i feel like the thing is like so many other times in movies when it happens like it's not like it doesn't feel earned like the person throws up um and it's like well, why are they like oh they just drank too much or you know whatever it's like something related to that whereas like in this moment like it's such a like you know like so encountering a dead body like yeah, well, and we know Bobby. This is how she reacts to things, right? She faints. Oh, she faints. It is like very like. Yeah, man. She's true. Mean, That's her thing. Know, her. Yeah. I, All right. I will say this though: people vomit more in student movies than they do in like classic <laughs> yeah. filmmaker films. <laughs> yes, that's a good point. As a, yeah. as a, as a, as a general rule, that would be funny to rule, study but... every like. A movie that averages like four and a half stars from critics and find out how much vomit there is in it. And then movies that average one star from critics and figure out the rate <laughs> vomit per movie, you know? Direct correlation. There yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, then Nancy is examining the body and notices the cut rope. She makes the realization that uh, Skip is, is probably dead down there. And now the bad cool. guy appears. Uh, Nancy backs. Have we? Do we see him here, or is, is it still that we don't even see him yet? I can't remember. But he's about to be revealed. I don't see him. He's yeah. about to be revealed, and he looks great. You know, he's just the right amount of uh, like scary monster slash human. You know, he's mostly human, but just like a little bit off. And um, and he looks he he, he looks cool. He, I like him. You guys? Yeah. yeah. It reminds me of Friday the Thirteenth look a little bit. Uh, is did 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 Buchler, He directed one of them, right? The VFX guy directed one of the Fridays, uh, I think. But ah, but I, I like I liked the uh, I liked uh, Nancy's backing away too, and and her sort she, of scare. She's good. That, that, that was, was like good, Tom. Yeah. Tom was like this. The way she back like backs away sustains that all the way to where Bobby is, which is like actually she has to cross like at least 20 feet it felt like of distance yeah i mean it probably wasn't that actually in reality but like i think it camera magic or whatever yeah it was good but it felt like a a substantial amount of distance it's like her backing away it it's not a quick thing like Mm. she backs away she backs away she backs away and then she grabs bobby and like pulls her and starts running and then the slow motion. Yeah, so yeah, so now we have slow mo- it, it cuts from slow mo of the girls running down the hill to like 
point of view shots that's sped, sped up. Am, am I right? Like that's interesting. Decision. And then that, and Mark is tr- tr- Mark is running towards them too, isn't he? So is that him? supposed to be like who, what is going on, Charlie? What is going on with the? the There's stuff? a lot of stuff going on there. Uh, I think they double printed the frames so you see like sort of stuttery slow motion which would be done in in as an optical effect at that time but um Mm. there's a lot going on yes everything's coming together the girls are run in in a little bit of a confusing way but girls are running mark is running the The bad guy killer is running and yeah they're all coming together so now nancy's basically given up and just leaning oh oh wait, wait first though um bobby steps in a trap Oh yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah. That's effective, and it, it's this is a really yeah. great like sudden kill scene. It it's effective. It's pretty brutal, too. Actually, that worked. Yes. Yeah. Oh, I felt I felt that one kind of like Ooh, yeah, like God. you literally. That's a jolting one, right? Yeah. Like you're not expecting that because up until then, every moment that we see him, every moment, every kill that he's had has been a direct kill. Yeah. 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 That was that was planted way earlier. Remember when he bent the tree down and set the trap? Yeah, like, they established it, was, it very subtly. Yeah, yeah, yeah good really work early. there. So now Nancy, at this point, is just like leaning against a tree, pleading with the guy. Um, when um, to the rescue comes uh, our everyone's hero, Ranger Mark. He hits the guy with a dart. But yeah. uh, alas, he should have brought the uh, the thirty out six. He really, he really needed that yeah. thirty out six. Or shot him with a second dart. I mean, I that's the other it's thing. It's like, oh, I'm yeah. all done. Okay, so then he looks at his watch. <laughs> like, wh- why is he looking? He's like, I can't, I can't possibly give him extra tranquilizer. I must wait thirty seconds before shooting again. What is, what is going on there? I know that is such a strange choice. It's great. <laughs> yeah, just, it's just fire another one. Don't. Time it out. He wants to like write a review to the tranquilizer company. <laughs> After 20 seconds, I found that it was ineffective when your literature said that it would actually work. <laughs> so the bad yeah, guy just uh, takes it out of his shoulder and continues his rampage. But Mark is not going to totally quit. He charges the guy. He goes for the knees. And it's, uh, it's a good move. He knocks him down. Uh, Nancy just leaning back watching this all happen. Mark then takes a big stick, hits the guy right over the head with it. Done. No, don't yeah. even, don't even look at him, Mark. You've done your <laughs> job. You turn 180 degrees away from the man and and start um, petting Nancy's long hair. You know that's what you should be doing at this moment. Pet and that hair. That stick was that stick was not very substantial either. <laughs> I know. I mean, when you go back and look at it, you're like, is that kind of like a barky dried piece of <laughs> light wood that it's like a breakaway balsa wood so yeah he but... t- turns away from the guy giving the guy the perfect opportunity to do what he does best and that is to just snap your neck so he does that to, to poor mark um then he approaches nancy um presumably to kill her but no so he's got a different plan for nancy and, and frankly I don't know if I'm reading into it. I, it feels like Nancy has an understanding that she's borderline on board. Was I overreading that one, Tom? <laughs> she's not on no, board. No, I wouldn't okay. say that. All right, all right. She's just surrendering to this madman. She understands. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's such a. It's I mean, weird. it's so disturbing. That is what makes the ending so disturbing. Yeah. And it's like. But she could have tried to run. Like he, she could she have, still had a little, you know. Yeah. Dis- okay. So there's a little something there. I wasn't crazy to think that there was a no, little. I, don't think it's the, I think she surrenders, but I don't think that she wants it. Right. Like it's like I think she. It's more of a like. I I actually think she's giving herself up to die, and then you see the gleam in the monster's eye, and you realize that it's actually worse. Yeah. So what what really happens? We're we're, we're gonna have to just um, assume, but it seems that he just takes her to the cave and um, they uh, they they just live together um, as husband and wife. And um, then we see the forest in the winter; it's snowy. Then we see springtime. Time has passed. A butterfly. We see some flowers, and high atop the mountain, we see a cave. And we hear the sound of a happy little baby. 
and uh, that's the movie right there. Uh, Nancy has presumably <laughs> given birth to to hit to the monster's baby, and um, and they're just doing the best they can together as a family up there. <laughs> oh man! Homeschooled. Home Homeschooling. Yeah. I mean, it's uh, it's a lot I. Of, a lot. What's it called? North. A lot of chores. What's the place called? Chores. North Side. It's yeah. it's an North idyllic um, place to, to raise a kid. North Point, whatever. Uh, so wow. so that's the prey, and um, you know, I mean, talking about it with you guys, I I feel a, a real fondness for it now. You know, like <laughs> <laughs> this is what happens every time I'm watching it, and I'm just hitting my head and saying why. And now I, I we just spent an hour and forty minutes. We talked about it longer than the way longer than the movie is. <laughs> <laughs> but this is what happens every time. It's like you're like, oh, there's like literally no plot. Yeah, but it's great. <laughs> but it's like when you you're wanna... so done and just like, but th- 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 it's th- more fun to be, you know, in in that place with other people, you know. You... Well, and actually, yeah. it's just like figuring out the choices that these like. What's interesting to me is like the the choices that the director and screenwriter and like all the back the crew made to make, put this film together that's what's interesting to me because the movie itself is not interesting but like but like all the choices because like yeah. and it's like all these beautiful nature shots and i was like you know a lot why? of work it's yeah. a lot of work yeah why why so <laughs> many moments when they're cutting back and forth in these super quick cuts and you're just like I don't understand any of uh, why you're making these decisions, but I mean, it yeah. definitely makes it stand out. Before we do our reviews, um, Charlie, did you get any other um, tidbits from the commentary that you wanted to share? I, I kind of chimed in with them right. while, while we while we were doing it. And but, Tom, uh, oh, go. That, no, that, yeah, right, I, okay. I feel I feel pretty Tom, happy on that. Any more bits of info we should know? Um, I can't think of any other bits of info. Just one thing i forgot to mention when um when they were looking when they thought um greg and uh gail were just like playing like hide and seek or something they and greg or skip calls out ali ali home free yes Do you remember that part? yes as i like when i was a kid we used to yell ali ali oxen free it's the same thing right it's like mm. it's it's just it's another thing like the song on the way in it's something you wouldn't think that this age person would do and i just i wanted to mention it before but i forgot but it's just a weird touch i liked it you know but it's a weird touch you're right yes 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 all right so um my review is uh it's 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 pretty good it's it's very got a lot of memorable moments they're not necessarily memorable because they're good they're memorable because they're confounding and um um, it's my second time watching it. It looks so much better, uh, in HD. Um, oh my goodness. The VHS that we watched was just so murky and dark and difficult to, to sit through. So, um, and, uh, just, it's just memorable moments, especially, you know, the banjo playing and, uh, and the, you know, the campfire conversations that were clearly not thought out in advance. And, um, yeah, the prey is, uh, you know, in a bowl, you know, again, like Charlie says, it's a hangout and it's kind of cool just hanging out with them. And you don't, you know, you don't have to deal with the last third of the movie being, or maybe it is a third, but, but it doesn't feel like the second half of the movie is just bad darkness, running away, being scared. We're just, we're having fun. We're having fun almost. In, and then just as an afterthought, they're like, oh yeah, we got to kill everybody. And that that's the way yeah. I like it. So, uh. So yeah, it's it's pretty good. I've been won over. You were right, Tom, all along. Why don't you tell us how much you love this movie? It's it's funny. I was I, when Charlie mentioned to go get the book. I was reading back through uh, some of my notes, and it's yeah, I, I wrote like way to go. <laughs> like this is like the, you know the the moments uh, with the the ranger make no sense, but I I love them because they're so weird, and I still kind of feel that way. You know it. It's definitely, um, it's good to see like the international version and kind of see what other people might have experienced. And I'm glad we didn't experience that the first time because we probably wouldn't have liked it as much. Yeah. Um, but you know, I it's just a it's a comfortable movie, and I like that. You know, there there's certain movies like that, 
like the forest has like touches of comfortableness, but then it gets kind of icky, you know, because it, it's a little weird with the kids and cannibalism and stuff. And the, there's other movies like, like, uh, like you were saying uh, with um, Deathstock, right? It's the same kind of vibe, but then there's weirdness with, mm-hmm. you know, the the relationships with some of the people. But this, like, aside from the very end when the creepy monster moment, like it's it's just comfortable throughout, and there's not a lot of unpleasantness you know or like things that are gross or like uncomfortable like so i kind of like that about it and it's beautiful like like you said watching the blu-ray it was it was beautiful ava so i'm gonna read the first paragraph of your original review matt uh-uh. <laughs> the ideal horror movie is set in the woods the prey is not the ideal horror movie but at least it takes place in the woods the shocking epilogue to the story almost makes up for all the boring scenes leading up to it. Is that the? That's probably my. My reviews are the worst, by the way. I just, I'm I'm the weak link of our books. I, just, I, I really I really feel like that sums up most of my feelings. I mean, I I don't I don't I don't particularly enjoy the way this movie ended. Um, but but it was just it was just fascinating to be to watch this with with Tom and be like. I was just like, what, why has nothing happened? Like, and then you get to that like last five minute sequence and I'm like, okay, it went that way. Like yeah. completely unexpected. And like, I, you know, it, it's just, you know, it's just fascinating to me. And I like, you know, and I think part of the reason why I'm so like creeped out by the ending is obviously that they did a very good job, and this monster is very extremely unappealing, and I want no part of that. So right. I'm very horrified for Nancy, who was very like probably the most attractive girl on the on the set. Yeah, yeah I know. I don't know why Gail was getting all the um, compliments. Um... Well, she's like the bombshell, so she's like super obvious, but Nancy's actually the most attractive one. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Charlie, your review. <laughs> Yeah, this, like I was saying, Hangout movie, this is a sleepover movie. The, the fact that not that much is happening is a benefit because you could be talking, you could go get popcorn, you could take a quick phone call. You're, you're doing all this stuff, and then you don't have to feel, A, too bad that you missed something, or B, that there's weird, too much weird grossness or unpleasantness. So if you have it on... If you were having a sleepover and you rented three slashers, this would be one of them. You're not pinning all your hopes on this movie. You don't necessarily have to see it in the theater. But um, as a VHS at home, yeah, it fits the bill. And it, it has a couple unique things that you would uh, talk about afterward. I would. I mean, I would actually recommend the DVD just because the 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 it's really amazing the the quality of <laughs> and one last thing i'll say is this is so early i mean uh, so early in the slasher cycle yeah. it's so innocent compared to something that would have been come out in 87 or 88 which would have yeah. been much glossier yeah. maybe had a lot more nudity oh um, absolutely the girls wouldn't have looked so and they, they look like normal 20 or early 20s people you know whatever it wasn't very sleazy Mm-hmm. Um, otherwise, it's it's a very organic looking movie, and it, and that gives it an innocence that uh, the later uh, VHS era stuff did not have. I'd like it's to funny see. Cause... Uh, I'd like okay. to see. A, I'd like to see a quote on the poster. You could take a phone call mid movie, and you wouldn't miss anything. <laughs> <laughs> I was just gonna say that one of the things that I like um, is actually how experienced camper, like almost everyone on the, like, they were all experienced campers. Like, these people were written as experienced campers, except for maybe Gail. Like, the guy, like, they know their wilderness stuff. Like, they know their wilderness, they're gonna climb this rock. They're gonna, like, you know, it's like, usually it's like these kids who don't know anything and they go, you know, and I yeah. liked that it was not set up that way. Like, yeah. you know, like, it's one of the reasons, like, I, we watch Brooklyn Nine-Nine, and I always say, like, one of my favorite things about that television show is, like, as much as it's a workplace comedy, as much as all these people are, like, funny characters, they're also really good at their jobs. And I like that balance, where I'm like, okay, mm. these are people who are, like, really good campers, like, yes, they get into this crazy situation, but, like, it's because it's crazy. Like, you don't expect there to be a 15-year-old burnt dude hanging out in the woods, which... The timing of that doesn't make sense with the burning in the the 1948 to 
80, yeah. like that timing is slightly off yeah. for the age of the <clears throat> yeah, it's a little... monster boy, whatever. Yeah. But whatever. That's just yeah. nitpicky. Minor, minor point. Well, um, we did it. Um, and, and everyone's good, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, that was that was fun. Yeah. Nearly two hours on the prey. Uh thanks everybody for uh Tom, Ava, and Charlie. This is Matt saying good night.